Mother Nature in Mexico embraces the mystery of ancient times. I was able to see a new world deep within this land. It was a totally different world full of beauty and wonders. I'm off in search of the treasure of El Dorado in this land blessed by nature. The Blue Sea gives rich products. What other treasures could be hidden in it? I will find out right now. Mexico is a nation located in the southern part of the North American continent. The Pacific Ocean lies to the west with the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea to the east. It embraces the sea with gifts of nature from God. The first place I will be visiting is Cancun, a beautiful beach city in the Caribbean. Cancun is located on the Yucatan Peninsula in the southeastern part of Mexico. This city, which looks out onto the Caribbean Sea, is a world-famous resort location Mexico is proud of. Cancun is known for its emerald waters and clean white beaches. It is one of the places Americans want to live most after retirement. I understand, as I don't think it would be easy to bring myself out of the brilliant and alluring sea. I can see why Cancun is called the Paradise of the Caribbean. There is a place one must visit when in Cancun. It's Isla Mujeres, which means the Island of Women, and is located 30 minutes from Cancun. As it's a famous resort location, they have top services for tourists. However, what makes the tourists most happy is this blue sea. We arrive at the island before I know it. I head for the Dolphin Experience Center as soon as we hit land. This is where dolphins become friends with man. A dolphin greets me just then. Soon after that, dolphins put on a spectacular welcome performance. The strong dolphins show off amazing jumps. Now it's time to play in the water with the dolphins. However, there are a few things to keep in mind. You can't wear any jewelry in order to protect the dolphins. Also, you can only touch the dolphins when the trainers tell you to. 
너무 귀엽게 생겼어요. 막 웃, 웃는 모습이 정말 기뻐서 반가워서 웃는 것 같아요. I'm able to get close to the dolphin quickly as it approaches me without any fear. They seem to be comfortable around me. They show me tricks and play around. Minutes later, you proceeded to say something that almost broke my heart. You get a chance to swim with them after getting familiar with them. The people seem like a dolphin in the midst of them. I can't let this opportunity pass. The dolphins push me above the surface. I get a thrilling experience of cleaving through the water and swimming with them. It was short, but awesome. I became fond of them during the short amount of time. I hope to see them in the wide sea next time. A dense forest appears if you leave the Caribbean and travel shortly inland. The Mayan civilization prospered in the past on the Yucatan Peninsula, where Cancun is located. In this dense forest lies a hidden well, which was considered holy by the Mayans. It is a place called cenote. It means well in the Mayan language. A cenote is a natural well created by melted limestone when it rained on this karst zone. A few cenotes in Cancun turned into places visited to heal minds and bodies by enjoying the cenote's beauty. I'm off in search of one of the wells. Num, Ha, Kak, Ik are gods from Mayan myths. They are the gods of land, water, fire and wind. And cenotes named after them are found here. Everybody say hi, Aluskak! Kak is the god of fire and the guardian of the jungle. A cenote is a natural well, and the sizes vary from ones as large as a lake to ones as deep as wells. Some stretch out underground in the shape of an underwater cave. Here you can see various kinds of cenotes. I jump into the water at the thunderous cheers of encouragement. Once I am in the water, I realize that the water is so clear that I can see the bottom. It's like swimming in water from a water purifier. Numerous tourists praised it for being the world's best natural swimming pool.
The cenote stretches out in a long strip through the jungle. Swimming here is definitely a unique experience. What kind of adventure awaits me next? <laughs> The cenote named after Ik, the wind god, is shaped like a large lake. It is the oldest cenote in the area. Since the cenote is named after the wind god, I will be ziplining and enjoying the wind. The color of the cenote below is stunning. This is our great crew right here of light guards. Everybody say after hi. listening to the guide's instructions, we prepare to zip line one by one. Everyone gets excited like a small child. Viento, que abraza tu espalda. Soy la nubecita en la que te descansas. Soon, I am up next. I throw myself like Tarzan. Wow, a thrill ripples through my entire body. The <laughs> The ancient Mayans regarded cenotes as sacred wells and as a door to the afterworld. It is also where the souls of the dead are reincarnated. The cenote is the origin of everything. Here, I go back into the beginning of time. I hear the sound of life among the silence.
The cenote, which is a door that leads to another world, was also the object of worship to the Mayans. A long time ago, the Mayans were known to have sacrificed women in the water when there was a drought. There is an altar on the inner side of the cenote where the ritual was held. Some descendants of the Mayans hold a ceremony here even to this day. It is a ceremony to cleanse one's mind and body with the smoke from incense burnt on a brazier. It was a ritual held when children were born in the past, when they officially became an adult, or when one was going to war or to some place far away. Que se la pasen bien, que tengan un día agradable, que se llenen de energía para que cuando regresen a sus casas, sus lugares de orígenes, sus países, pues ellos lleven la mente, el corazón, un poquito más contentos, más poderosos. A peculiar smell finds the cenote. The breath of the Mayans is still flowing through the land of Cancun. There are over 3,000 cenotes on the Yucatan Peninsula where Cancun is located. This is the most popular cenote with tourists. This cenote is called Dos Ojos, which means two eyes. It's where you can do many different activities, including snorkeling and scuba diving. I drown myself in the primitive blue. The cenote here also meets other currents that flow underground. It becomes the entrance to an underwater cave that lies underground. Entonces, el estar ahí abajo el agua, realmente la, la, la claridad del agua es inigualable. La única forma que tú sabes que, que es agua es porque el buzo hace burbujas. Si no, no te darías cuenta realmente que está, parece que está en el aire, ¿no? Es maravilloso. Another world lies underwater. This river flows underground. In this limestone zone, the rainwater seeps into the ground, melting it and creating a waterway.
that waterway created this underground cave. Stalagmites and stalactites in erratic shapes grew underwater and created this unique scenery. I can't tell where the cave ends. Sadly, my cave exploration comes to an end. However, geologists continue to explore them. I see sunlight shining into the cenote far away. The site is like a holy ceremony in itself. I leave Cancun in the Caribbean and the Atlantic and head for Ensenada in the Pacific, which is another beach in Mexico. Ensenada is a coastal city located on the Baja California Peninsula in the northwestern part of Mexico. And the fishing industry is well developed. Traditional Mexican restaurants and stores that sell commodities are lined up in the center of Ensenada. Menudo is what Mexicans eat to cure hangovers. It was influenced by Spanish cuisine and is a type of soup made with cow intestines. The soup, which is boiled over a long period of time, like Korean beef soup or intestine soup, has an amazing broth. This reminds me of those times. I missed this taste for a long time. I haven't had good menudo in a long time. I'm able to reminisce past memories in this restaurant. The highlight of Ensenada is the fish market. There is a large variety of fresh seafood caught from the Pacific Ocean.
Of them all, Ensenada is famous for its tuna, which is known as the royalty of the sea. Recently, the regulations on tuna fishing became strict all over the world, and it is farmed in large scale on the coast. Unlike Koreans, they smoke the tuna. It's tasty in its own way. I look down at the blue sea and find a tuna farm in an enclosing net. They catch young tuna and farm them by keeping them captured in deep water. I can't give up my opportunity to see the magnificent sight of a school of hundreds of tuna. Okay, that's all it. Buenos días, señor. Hola, ¿qué tal? Gracias. Luckily, I find a boat that is sailing out to the farm to feed the tuna. I'm not the only guest on the boat. There are uninvited guests, the pelicans. They are after the tuna feed. It is approximately a one-hour boat ride from the coast to the tuna farm. As we approach the farm with a boat full of tuna feed, Another group of unwanted guests gather around the boat. This time, it's a flock of seagulls. Keeping the sardines away from them seems like a tough task. Finally, it's time to feed the sardines to the tuna. Tunas have a habit of swimming at high speeds in schools. They can swim up to 160 kilometers an hour when catching prey. That is a very high speed. Approximately 1,000 tuna are in one farm and 7.5 tons of feed are used for each farm. Wow, the size is unbelievably huge. Oh no. A shark is approaching the farm. They smell the prey. Now the most essential thing to do is to protect the tuna from the shark. Yeah. 
A fight for survival breaks out in the calm sea. In the midst of that, a group of seals appear out of nowhere. I wave enthusiastically at the cute seals. The seals playfully move around hearing me whistle. However, I find out that seals are also predators that threaten the tuna. Not only do seals eat the sardines, but they also attack the tuna. A single seal can eat 100 tunas within five minutes, which makes them worse than sharks. <laughs> 그 가두리 안에 있는 참치가 100톤이라면은 주위에 있는 물개가 큰 200톤이 넘는다입니다. 그러니까 이 물개와의 전쟁이 빨리 가두리의 그 승부가 달려 있는 것 같습니다. Right then, a dog goes out to the net. This dog has a special mission. Will this dog be able to chase the seals away? This is unbelievable. Interestingly, the seals run away when the dog barks. It chases the seals away skillfully on top of the shaky boat. He's a useful guy. This farm is like a miniature ecosystem. A dangerous struggle to survive breaks out in the peaceful sea. Ironically, I'm able to enjoy a breathtaking view created by the sea. Ta-da-da-da, tranquila. <laughs>